This section has a look at efficiency and it's important because quite often, be it from a business or organizational point of view, we want our users to be productive and hence efficient. And also if the user feels that the software is holding them back or does not let them be efficient, that can be a quite a significant source of, of lowering our overall user satisfaction. So in this section here, we're gonna have a look at a couple of different ways that we can measure efficiency. And we've really encountered one way, which is time on task. So generally speaking, the quicker in which you complete the task, the more efficient it is. And we'll return to that at the end, but certainly for the next number of slides, we want to have a look at a slightly different way of thinking about efficiency. And that other way then is, is to measure the amount of effort that it takes to complete a task. And we can improve our efficiency by reducing the amount of effort that it takes to complete a task successfully. How do we measure effort? Now there's a couple of different ways you can do that. A, a fairly crude but quite often effective way of doing it is to measure the number of actions that the user had to take to complete that task. Now actions, you can include a wide variety of things. It may be locating a button and clicking on that button. It may be entering some information into a field making a choice they're all different actions that we can ask our user to do and it's a crude assumption um, and, and it's not always necessarily the case but crudely the greater the number of actions that the user has to take then the less efficient the process is and by reducing the number of actions we can make the process more efficient fundamental assumption in this is that the the cost of doing an individual action is, is comparable. So we're not um, sort of uh, taking three very quick and easy actions and replacing them with one really, really complex and difficult to do action. That, that would be the wrong way of going about this. So if we assume that all actions are roughly comparable, then we can count them and that does give us a way of measuring um, or tracking our efficiency. So in many products, if that's the assumption we have, um, if we minimize the number of actions, meaningful, equally weighted actions that the user has to take, that does give us a way of improving the overall task efficiency. There are other ways. There's, there's a number of actually quite interesting ways of, of doing this. And I'll give you an example of, of one of them here on this particular um, a slide. And it basically ties into getting the user to do another activity, um, sort of a secondary supplemental activity, alongside completing the task. Now that may be that they're trying to, you know, to, to fill in the form and to interact with something whilst keeping account or doing some other physical activity uh, in terms of tapping or sequencing. And the interesting thing around this here is that very much the as the cognitive load associated with doing the primary task, completing the piece of task through the software, as that increases, then the performance on the secondary task decreases. So you can get the users to do different types of tasks. What you're measuring then is their ability and a reasonably quite simple, quite straightforward secondary task. And that how that performance varies gives you an indication into the amount of time and effort they're spending on that initial first task. So that's that's can be an interesting way then of getting a, a more of a deeper insight into the cognitive load that the individual is experiencing. And why is this important? Well, it ties into broadly the issues around efficiency. In some cases, we do want to make sure that our users are not cognitively burdened using whatever type of interface we have. And if you have, for example, an interface inside um, a vehicle, um, where it's not fully autonomous, where the user then would have some control over driving as well. We would want to make sure that any types of interactions through that mechanism do not introduce high cognitive load that is likely to distract the user from the primary process, which in this case would be driving. So in terms of uh, how do we collect and measure efficiency, and we're returning here back to the idea of we will be counting actions as our particular mechanism for doing this. Three key things. 
The first thing is that we have to upfront uh, be able to identify all of the actions that we want to, to measure. So this means that we know for a particular task we have we're in the process where we, we can record, but we have identified the user might do this, the user could do that. We've labeled and articulated what our actions are. So that gives us the things then that we can measure. As mentioned, we should try to make sure that our actions are comparable in terms of weight, that each is as meaty as the other. And we don't have um, an example of some really, really sort of trivial actions and some very quite complex and challenging actions. That will not really give us comparable um, metrics to use. It's really quite important we also define start and end conditions as in terms of when we commence our measurement and when we complete our measurement because that then defines the boundaries inside which we will be counting um, the number of actions. Um, and that sometimes is really quite straightforward. We display the page and we start counting the number of actions. Whenever the user hits submit, the end of the page. In other cases, it may be less tangible so that if we display a web page and we're expecting the user to look for some information through that, we don't know necessarily when they will start that process, when they will finish that process, what other aspects might they do through that. Uh, and the third key element then is we have some means of being able to count these actions. Um, we have to have a mechanism. That may be an observer, it may be a video, it may be sort of tracking the, the events that occur through the computer in terms of pushes and clicks and other types of interaction. But we need to have some met metric or mechanism then that we can accurately count our number of actions. So quite often there can be a more involved experimental setup here in terms of enabling us to, to do this. When we've done all of that, in terms of presenting it then, typically we, we present it as the, the average number of actions for a participant to complete a task. And again, you can view it at a, at a, a task level, looking across our users who do that. You can look at users in terms of the number of actions they take across a range of tasks to work out what sort of variability we see um, across our users. It helps us identify then aspects around, well, which tasks do seem to take the most actions. We can have a bit of reflection at that point to think, well, is that what we would expect because these tasks are more significant? If it's not, then we can have a look to see, well, is there an opportunity to improve some aspects around the efficiency? We can also then identify if some users seem to be taking significantly longer or are less efficient and try to think about what may be the reasons around that. And again, it, it may tie into a range of factors that some elements may not be as intuitive or as, uh, as, as understandable as we would like, all the way through to, to mental models may be differing or varying. And just to finish this and really to return to what we mentioned at the start, um, we, t time on task does give us another metric of efficiency. And if you take time on task and you combine it with task success, so this is then, well, was the user able to do it? And well, how much time then was required in doing it? That also gives us another measure that we can look at efficiency. Uh, broadly, we want our tasks to be done in a short period of time. So that if you have a, a setup where you are measuring time on task and task success, you probably don't then need to include a separate one to measure efficiency because you can look at the data you've collected through those sources again as a as a, another proxy or way of measuring efficiency. So that brings us to the end of this particular uh, section. In the next one we're going on to look at something um, which really is quite key and fundamental to a lot of software today. It's the idea of learnability, about how easily or not a user learns to use a new um, new pieces of functionality or to learn to use a new application.